Okay, in this last video, we, we do another one. Rather than looking at um, facility locations, we're also we're going to look at a demand location having a single source of supply. So if you want to force demands, force customers or add constraints where customers are only served by a single source of supply, uh, you can do that as well. It's, uh, it's one of those where it's easy to say. It was a, a little bit tricky to do. Uh, but let me show you how to do this, and we're going to look at a, we're going to extend example 6.4. So this was 6.4. This was the solution that we had, and if you notice that Boston is getting uh, demand from uh, both Cleveland and York, and Chicago is getting stuff from Cleveland and Bedford. St. Louis already has a single source, and Lexington does as well. But how can we force all four of these to only have a single source of supply? So the first thing we're going to do is that we've got to create some binaries, some yes-nos. So I'm going to copy this down, and then I'm going to make all these, and I'm going to go to my solver, and I'm going to add, in addition to the variables we already have, I'm going to add these additional 12, and then I'm going to add a constraint that says that these have to be binaries. So these are going to be yes no's. If I would just solve it now, well, if I that's what these are. There's going to be yes no's. Now what I've got to do is force these to turn on if this is shipped. So since this one is 2000, this should be 1. And this is 4000, this should be 1. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I've got to create something called, I'm just going to use M and put in just an arbitrarily big number. And this number probably needs to be a magnitude bigger than any demand that we could potentially ship. And then I'm going to create, uh, just going to do it this way. <coughs> um, I'm going to take this, I'm going to multiply it by this arbitrarily big number. So these are the yes no's, these are the yes no's multiplied by an arbitrarily big number. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to force these values, I'm going to force these values to be less than or equal to these. And the only way that happens is that these will have to turn on. This will have to turn on if I'm going to ship 2000 from Cleveland to Boston. That will turn on and you can see now that number is okay. Otherwise it won't turn on. So now that I've, so I've got those, now I can write a constraint that says that the amount shipped have to be less than or equal to these. So now when I solve this, look what happens is that I now am in turn, I'm turning things on. So now I can see that I'm using Boston twice. Chicago, um, excuse me, I'm using uh, two sources of supply for Chicago, two for Boston. And now the last thing is I just need to sum these. And then write a constraint that forces all of these to be less than or equal to 1. Now right now this is my cost, 33500 So when I add this last constraint where all of these sources of supply need to be less than or equal to 1, and I solve it now, you can see that I met it. I met this. Bedford is now um, the only source of supply for Boston. Cleveland is the only source for Chicago. York is the only source for these. It drastically changed my network. Uh, but that's what, it, I, it got me a single source. But look what happened to the cost. It doubled. So anytime you add constraints, you're never going to get a better answer. The goal, hopefully, is that you get an answer that's just a little bit worse. So what we're saying now is that, yes, we can achieve a single source of supply if that's important. If the quality aspect of having a single source supply are things that we would never try to put in a math model are more important, but there is a consequence to this. So we do have the trade-off that when you do go to a single source of supply, the cost. So you hopefully the cost that uh, you save for doing this, uh, uh, the benefits outweigh this, this drastic uh, increase in cost. Thanks.